Did you take the news when they told you that the threads had retracted? Yeah, it was really hard. It was very, very hard to give up all of the amazing things that I was able to do. I think I had like cried basically afterwards. Have you heard about Elon Musk's super cool brain chip? It's supposed to help people control computers and other stuff just by thinking about it. But guess what? The first person to get the chip had some problems and it didn't work the way it was supposed to. What happened? Is it even safe? Get ready to find out the truth about this amazing invention that might not be as amazing as we thought. Noland Arbaugh, a man who became paralyzed after a diving accident. Hey, I'm Nolan. Um, seven years ago, I dislocated my C4, C5 while swimming in a lake. There were a lot of things to adjust to. Some things I would have never guessed would be difficult became very difficult. Volunteered to be the first person to have the Neuralink chip implanted in his brain. This innovative device, developed by Elon Musk's company, promised to potentially restore lost movement and improve communication for those with paralysis. Initially, Arbao seemed to be making progress, showing improved control over a computer cursor and interacting with digital devices using just his thoughts. I would say the next big goal for the robot would be to make it so that there's minimal neurosurgeon interface, that a neurosurgeon can walk in and talk to the patient, make them feel comfortable about the procedure, walk them through exactly what's going to happen, and then essentially click go. However, weeks after the surgery, several of the tiny threads connecting the chip to his brain started to detach. This malfunction significantly reduced the device's effectiveness and raised concerns about its safety and reliability. The detached threads not only hampered Arbaugh's ability to control external devices, but also posed potential health risks. This setback highlighted the complexity complexities and challenges of developing and implanting such devices, especially those designed to interact with the delicate structures of the human brain. In response to the malfunction with Noland Arbaugh's Neuralink chip, the company immediately initiated efforts to diagnose and rectify the issue. Neuralink engineers and neuroscientists worked diligently to identify the root cause of the thread detachment and develop software updates to mitigate its impact on Arbaugh's control. I mean, when I first actually moved the cursor with my mind. It blew my mind for like a whole day. And to be helping, to be able to be useful in some way, it completely changed how I live. These software updates proved to be somewhat successful, allowing Arbaugh to regain some functionality and even improve his performance in certain tasks compared to his pre-malfunction state. However, Neuralink has not disclosed specific details regarding Arbaugh's current condition, leaving many questions unanswered. While Neuralink maintains that Arbaugh's progress is encouraging, the incident has raised concerns about the long-term stability and reliability of the Neuralink implant. It also highlights the challenges of developing and implementing complex brain-computer interfaces, particularly in a real-world setting with human subjects. But wait, Neuralink isn't the only player in the brain-computer interface game. It's a crowded field with some fierce competitors vying for the top spot. One of the most notable is BrainGate. Because the BrainGate sensor is located on his motor cortex, we can read out or decode his intended movements in real time, and the cursor goes where he wants it to go on the screen. A consortium of researchers and institutions that have been developing their own implant for years. Their system has already shown promising results in clinical trials, allowing paralyzed individuals to control robotic arms and even regain some sensation. There's Kernel. If we can measure the rest of our bodies, why not our brains too? Now that flow makes it easy, we can. a company with a different approach altogether. Instead of invasive implants, they're focusing on non-invasive brain interfaces that use light and other technologies to interact with the brain from the outside. This could potentially offer a safer and less daunting option for those who are hesitant about surgery. Synchron, another major player, has made significant strides in the field. Their minimally invasive implant, called Stentrode, has already been implanted in human patients and has shown promising results in allowing them to control digital devices with their thoughts. While still in its early stages, Synchron's technology represents a significant step forward in the development of brain-computer interfaces. The competition doesn't stop there. A slew of other companies and research groups are working on their own unique approaches to brain-computer interfaces, from paradromics with their high bandwidth implants to BIOS, with their focus on neural interfaces for the peripheral nervous system. The race is on to see who can unlock the full potential of this groundbreaking technology. This fierce competition 
competition is not only pushing the boundaries of innovation, but also raising the stakes for Neuralink. The company must continue to innovate and overcome the challenges facing its technology to stay ahead of the curve. But with so many brilliant minds working towards the same goal, one thing is for sure, the future of brain-computer interfaces is looking brighter than ever. The malfunction with Arbaugh's implant serves as a stark reminder that Neuralink's technology is still in its experimental phase. While the potential benefits are undeniably enticing, the road to realizing them is fraught with challenges and uncertainties. The incident has raised questions about the long-term safety, efficacy, and durability of the implant, as well as the ethical implications of such a profound intervention in the human brain. Despite the setback, Neuralink remains committed to its ambitious goals. The company has stated that it is actively working on improving the design and functionality of the implant, with a particular focus on enhancing tech entry and cursor control. They also envision future applications that extend beyond communication, including the potential to control robotic limbs and restore sensory functions. However, the path forward is not without obstacles. Neuralink will need to address the technical challenges that led to the thread detachment, as well as rigorously test and refine the implant to ensure its safety and effectiveness in human subjects. Moreover, the company will need to navigate the regulatory landscape and engage in open dialogue with the scientific community and the public to address ethical concerns and ensure responsible development of this groundbreaking technology. Elon Musk and Neuralink have painted a tantalizing picture of a future where our minds can communicate directly with machines, unlocking a world of possibilities. The hype surrounding this futuristic vision has captivated the public's imagination, sparking dreams of superhuman human intelligence, telepathic communication, and a world where disabilities are a thing of the past. But is the hype warranted? The reality, as we've seen with Nolan Darbaugh's implant malfunction, is that the path to this sci-fi future is paved with challenges. It's a long and winding road, with unexpected twists and turns. The recent setback has served as a reality check for many, tempering the initial enthusiasm and reminding us that this groundbreaking technology is still in its infancy. Yet, despite the tempered expectations, the allure of Neuralink's vision remains strong. The idea of merging our minds with machines is a siren song that continues to echo in the public consciousness. People around the world are watching with bated breath, wondering if Neuralink will deliver on its promises and usher in a new era of human potential. While Neuralink remains optimistic about the future of their brain-computer interface and claims to be making progress, the incident serves as a sobering reminder of the complexities and challenges inherent in such cutting-edge technology. The path to unlocking the full potential of brain implants is likely to be long and arduous, filled with both triumphs and setbacks. We want to hear your thoughts on this developing story. Share your opinions in the comments below, like this video if you found it informative, and subscribe to our channel for more updates on the latest advancements in science and technology.